grab your birds and get in the morning kitchen because that's a thing that everybody has. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today we're talking Queen of Versailles. You guys, that crazy you know what is back and since she's back, I'm back. We're going to be talking about it. <laughs> Um, and here with me is my, let's see, I'm trying to think if I'm, if she's queen of Versailles, I'm going to make myself queen of Target. What are you? And I'm King Dollar Tree. This is Jay from Dr. Bad Vibes, also on YouTube. And we're here to talk about the (laughs) big old mess that is queen of Versailles. You guys, she's back. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, Jackie, is it Spiegel, Siegel, doesn't matter, uh, had... She got well known from her first special, Queen of Versailles. And then there was a second special that was just so depressing. And now there's this, which is even more depressing. So get ready for that. And Jay and I watched it, aka I forced him to watch it. And we have lots of thoughts on all of it. We're not even going to do a traditional scene by scene recap, even though I photographed it like that. We're just going to talk about some of the nonsense that's going on with this insane family. Yeah, so picking back up with the current story, I mean, what the fuck's a morning kitchen? This house is insane. I mean, no no human being needs this for one family. Um, but to give a little bit of backstory, I did watch the old stuff as well. Maybe it was a documentary at some point, TV show. Yeah, whatever it was. Um, basically, the husband invented timeshares, and because... Something that you have to bribe people to listen to and bully into purchasing. He made a shitload of money because uh, he was the first one to do it, and he was good at it, apparently. And they made a huge fortune. Everything was going great until 2008. You know, anything real estate related just crashed and burned, and that about wiped them out. And a few years before that, they broke ground on this house. For some reason, they wanted to build the biggest house in America. I don't remember the square footage, but it's something insane. 30,000 square feet, something like that. It's crazy. But it's, I guess, a more or less replica of Versailles, at least on the outside, for whatever reason. And um, anyway, 2008, lost everything. They were on the brink of bankruptcy, and... The uh, they, they sold everything to another company for some ungodly amount of money. So that put them back in the game. Um, apparently, they've decided to finish this house almost 20 years later. Uh, broke ground 2004. Here we are, 2022, just now, you know, getting the inside uh, built on it. But it's it's a train wreck. And, I mean, this doesn't make the uh, <laughs> rich or Americans look good. I mean, this is like, I mean, this is why this show exists. I mean, these are like people with way too much money and way too few brain cells. That's what it boils down to. So let's talk about this garbage heap of a home. He's exactly right. Okay, so the first thing glaring out of the gate, and, and I'm going to try to be nice here because I understand that she lost, I believe it's her oldest daughter to substance abuse. That's awful. I'm not even going to talk about or joke about that. Clearly, that's, you wouldn't wish that on anybody. Okay. All that aside, she's got to be on, I don't even, you know how I do. She's on Smills or something that rhymes with Smills, right? Allegedly, maybe? Like, she's going through these interviews and just, I don't even know how to explain. It's like a robot talking. Just no there there. You know, no life behind the eyes. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand it. None of it makes any sense. The reason he said morning kitchen, in case you haven't seen this, That is an expression that gets thrown around mm, about a thousand times. We're designing the morning kitchen. We're working on the morning kitchen. The morning kitchen. Like, we're all supposed to know what the fuck a morning kitchen is. I can guess by the words they're using, but that doesn't make it a thing. Oh, okay, great. I'm going to go have dinner in my... My fourth meal kitchen. (laughs) I couldn't even think of anything. Thank you. My fourth meal kitchen. I'm going to go have dinner. Great. Okay. That's a thing. (laughs) Wait, that should be a thing. Um, (laughs) We're going to go have dinner in our Taco Bell room. Then that's that. No, it's just all so over the top, but it's not even like, you know how you see some things and you're like, wow, I wish I had that, you know, like that's pretty cool. You see some over-the-top luxury items, and it's just like you get that 
envy, that want. That's not what this is. This is a big pile of shit. It's like Las Vegas, but with acid thrown on it. I don't know how to explain it. It's the worst thing I've ever seen. It's in Orlando, and it's almost like they tried to go Disney theme, but they really fucked it up royally. I'm not kidding. In the middle of this documentary show, whatever the hell it is, pieces are falling off of the house. We want... we. You guys, I'm like freaking out. She has this warehouse, which we'll talk about. And it's revealed that she has so much shit in this warehouse that they have bought over the years that she doesn't even like anymore. But the designer takes a look and says, yeah, we don't have room for all this stuff. We're going to have to pick and choose what we bring because they've bought too much stuff. This is just the one of the wildest things I've ever seen. Some of the older things, or the older documentaries, and this show as well, they kind of give a little backstory on Jack, uh, J- on Jackie herself. So she graduated uh, with some sort of engineering degree, which is shocking, <laughs> hearing her speak now. But um, she was also Miss Florida, which is apparently how they met uh, her and uh, David. Love at first sight. He loved her. She loved his bank account. I'm assuming, but. They got together, had a bunch of kids. She apparently had a head transplant and also went to a plastic surgeon and said, hey, I want bigger boobs, but not normal ones. Get those round things outside of Target and sew those into my chest. And that's about what they look like. They're huge concrete balls. And also, yeah, the kids. So, uh. I don't watch Below Deck. I'm aware of it. Obviously, Jen watches it a lot. I'll catch it every now and then. I did see the episode where this family was on the boat. And the only thing I really remember that stuck out, aside from, you know, the wife slurring all of her words, but the the sons, they were very creepy. Like, you could tell they came from a timeshare family because that was the approach they were using on all the girls on the boat. They had to trick them into a room, and you knew they were going to berate them until they got what they wanted. And... Uh-uh. Oh my gosh. He's not li- like, I totally forgot about that. They were the creepiest fuckers ever. They were just on the boat. Hee hee hee. Let's have some drinks with daddy. It was just, <laughs> it was a creepy, creepy moment. But yeah, it's just, would I recommend you watch this? Absolutely not. It's terrible. I think it had a three out of 10 on IMDb. Am I going to keep watching it? Probably because I just like to see all the bad decisions she's making. It makes me feel better about decisions in my life. Yeah, it's just a parody of uh, success and excess, I guess. Like, it just it makes America look bad, and I guess capitalism <laughs> look bad. I mean, if you work hard and succeed, yeah, sure, you're you're have some nice stuff, enjoy. But there's a point. I'm not going to get all preachy on this. I mean, that's a whole can of worms, but. I mean, they have all this money, and they're just blowing it on shit. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, at least... I mean, you can see, like, well, Elon's just trying to fly to Mars. I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of merit on that. I mean, you, I could... I'm on board with that. You could argue against it. I understand. But, I mean, building this hideous house, like, encased in marble and gold that's falling apart, I mean, it's just like, why? I mean, Why? <laughs> You're exactly right. I mean, do whatever you want with your money. It's your money. Go for it. Have fun. I want to watch like real estate porn, like the good stuff, you know, like when you watch those real estate shows where they show these mega mansions and things I can only dream about. Like I think about, oh my God, I'd love to have a huge pantry, you know, to store all my shit in so it's not all over my kitchen, things like that. But then you see this and that's not what this is. It's, over the top, but it's kind of all disgusting. It's dated and falling apart when you look at it. They basically explained they've had about 20 contractors, designers, etc. going in and out. And so because of that, it's not been one person across the board. So things are falling apart everywhere. Literally in the middle of filming, marble starts falling off the outside of the house. Jackie is shocked by this. I mean, you know, sure. Um, But she didn't understand why they had to go ahead and pull off the rest of the marble. Bitch, it's falling off your house. If that hits one of your 30 dogs or, you know, people living in your house, then they're not going to do well against the marble falling off the house. None of it makes any sense. It just makes me mad. 
Okay, let me tell you about this warehouse. It's 63,000 square feet. I believe that they said the house was going to be 30,000 square feet, and it's full wall-to-wall -wall of shit. And they can't understand why this won't fit into their house. Seriously, smells. Smells everywhere. Um, they... She talks so proudly about all the shopping they've done. They've collected for 20 years for this fucking house. They show things like a $3,000 shark that they bought for the house. She talks openly about forgetting everything she's bought. They show things like a cherub fountain for $63,000. Just packed away in this stupid warehouse. Again, she brings up this morning kitchen where the fuck that is. And <laughs> she's there to pick out antiques for that. She says that she and David would go antique shopping for the house. They'd spend a couple million. And uh, they do that. She said, I don't know. We did it a bunch. We probably spent about 30 mil or so on decorations for the house. Are you kidding me with this? Uh, but then she walks through and says, oh, my tastes have changed. What was I thinking with some of these things? And then talks about the things she's just going to leave in the warehouse because they won't fit in her house. Yeah, so they have all this expensive stuff just in a warehouse and probably not protected that very well, judging by, uh, there's another scene, it's in the house, not the warehouse, but there's a leak, uh, probably ruined antique wood. I think they said it was like a thousand years old or something. I mean, $6,000 a, $6, a plank, that's crazy. And, and you just left it there for water to get on it. I mean, that's absurd. But, you know, whatever, you got to store it somewhere, I guess. And then, uh, so after that, we switched to uh, Gatorland in Orlando, which I believe both of us have been to as kids. Uh, it's got, yeah, everybody's probably seen it in some pop culture. It's got the entrance of the big alligator head. I think it was on uh, Jackass at one point. I think it's where Steve-O uh, had the chicken in his underwear. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they're in Gatorland. Not for alligators, though. They're there to purchase birds for the morning kitchen to match the fabric. So they're literally treating the birds like furniture. I mean, I could understand if you want... I mean, I, I know it's different having a pet bird versus a wild bird. I mean, it's not like you're going to go in your kitchen and open the window and open the bird cage and, you know, they fly out in the garden and pollinate everything and sing to you and land on your arms in some Snow White situation. I mean, here they're just going to have their wings clipped and just be noisy, shrieking, shitting pieces of furniture in the corner of this kitchen that's used just for breakfast. Sure. I have to clarify on something Jay said that really made me laugh. He made it sound like we're brother and sister. <laughs> we didn't grow up together. We were just kids and went to the same areas. That's why he said that. But yeah, we both went to this alligator land. I forget what it's called. Gatorland. Uh, I, they actually took us on a school field trip. That's what happens when you grow up in Florida. They take you weird places like that. But that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. So she takes swatches of her damn furniture and wants to match birds with it and then try to buy birds. Turns out she has this obsession, well, with everything. Even the daughters kind of pointed out, like, she just gets obsessed with things and buys a bunch of them, like dogs and stuff, and collects things. But she's now interested. She talks about peacocks. They have a $100,000 stained glass peacock in their kitchen. But her new obsession, flamingos. She, she's trying to buy flamingos. And it's so weird because she's at the alligator farm, like Jay said. Not looking at alligators, just trying to buy birds, you know, as you do. So I know we're jumping around, but let's talk about this house itself. I just want you to see it and look at it. It's so dated and ugly, like terribly ugly. I understand that some people are into that look, fine, whatever. I just, I don't even think it's great for what it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? Like if you're into the, you know, French architecture, great. I've seen beautiful houses like that. Not this. That's not what this is. And they even allude to that they want to build this mega mansion and pass it down to their kids. In fact, they did. <laughs> the way they alluded to it is they she told the architect because hello, no self awareness smells. Um, she told the architect and the designer, listen, I'm going to pass this down to my kids, and we're going to need your kids to help my kids keep up with this house. And I'm just like, oh, okay, great. So you're asking them to be servants basically forever. Nice. Um, it just, it's so much, it's so ugly. And you can tell these designers and architects are just like trying to dance around that fact. And they're like, yeah, it's different. Things aren't uh, going to work here. They're going over previous architects' designs and trying to 
make it match up with what they want now. It's just such a mess. She, again, like Jay said, they, they had a room leak and it was from a toilet that wasn't supposed to be used, but it was used. So it started leaking. And I'm thinking like, well, isn't it taped off or why are there toilets that aren't supposed to be used? What's happening in this house? Yeah, this house is just so weird looking. I mean, European architecture is great. I mean, it stood the test of time. It's timeless. It's beautiful. You know, all that, uh, I guess, I'm not, I'm not a history buff. Like the post-Renaissance, uh, you know, till 17th century or so. I mean, you know, it's beautiful. I guess I, I guess this one Versailles was built. I can't remember. 14th century. I don't know. Whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> but she's trying to copy that aesthetic but it's almost like in a, I mean, granted, they are timeshare people. It's almost like in a theme park, like Disney Resort kind of way. Like, it kind of looks like it, but it's also kind of cheesy. It's way over the top. It's like, uh, you know, the fancy grandma that overdid it. And it's pretty much what we're looking at. It's probably been done cheaply, as you can see the outside's falling apart. I'm sure they cut some corners and skimmed some off the top. So just replacing that marble facade is going to be like $9 million of work and potentially up to a year's worth of work. And the thing they keep bringing up in this whole show is a fictitious deadline of having it done by New Year's so she can throw a party. All while her husband has not been in the show yet because he was in a four-wheeler accident at the age of 86 and in the hospital uh, having, you know, whatever done to him. Uh, not looking good. <laughs> Hey, big, scary, rock hard tits. How you doing? Okay. So yeah, David is in the hospital and he's had back surgery. The sur the doctor calls while she's, I don't know, doing whatever she's doing, shopping and says that while he had her, again, he's 86, while he had back surgery, they found, they kind of alluded to finding something else, didn't really explain it, but that he's going to need probably another surgery to get all fixed up, which will mean more time in the hospital and stuff. And she's kind of freaking out, but it seems more <laughs> concerned about this weird New Year's deadline. That's what the whole show is kind of revolving around so far. They do on the screen, you'll see like 10 months till New Year's, that sort of thing. So that, again, when they first started the episode, it was 11 months to New Year's. So, okay, process of elimination. We're talking January 2021. She's already planning her New Year's of 2022. We don't even know if the husband's going to make it. <laughs> She's focused on New Year's. It's very weird. As you were saying that, I came to a realization. So this is a Discovery Channel or Discovery Network TV show. So at some point, Discovery Channel lost its mind. Because remember when we were kids, it was all like space shuttles and like science. And then uh, it was either Monster Garage or American Chopper. I don't remember which one started it. But that's when it went totally off the rails this is the same formula. It's like, hey, it's like, here's some, here's a project we're doing. We have some insane deadline, and everything's all revolving around that deadline, and everybody's stressing out. Um, you know, instead of uh, Paul Jr. and Sr. screaming over a motorcycle, we've got this lady doing her thing. And, you know, also, it's like, come on, Discovery Channel, what's up? Oh, <laughs> uh, you guys, I feel dumber after watching this show. I really do. It's painful. <laughs> But I'll probably stick with it. I don't know how many episodes there are. I don't know. This is where I want you to comment below. Just everything. Did you watch it? Are you going to watch it? Are you just laughing with me <laughs> at these freak shows as we watch? Do you want to keep going with it? I'm 50-50. I will if you guys really want me to. Or Jay and I can just make fun of it as we go. Whatever you want. But yeah. So I guess I need to go buy some... Uh, I don't know, some giraffes to match our fourth dinner kitchen because that seems to be a thing. And <laughs> I guess that's it for me. Wow. Well, I'll never be worried about you spending too much at Target compared to this. As for me, I guess I'm going to go hang out with Jesse James in a junkyard and listen to Slayer play God Hates Us All Live. That's the thing that actually happened. Go Google that. No, no space shuttles. I guess we have to listen to uh, thrash metal in a junkyard. Anyways... I'm Jay. I'm Dr. Bad Vibes. You can check me out also on YouTube. Until next time, thanks for having me. Okay, last plug, I promise, but do check out Jay's channel. It's awesome. He does fun, nerdy gaming shit. So if you're into that, check that out. Also, Patreon. I've had so many people signing up, and I really, really appreciate that. Every single one helps out my channel so much, helps support the show, all that jazz. 
We have all kinds of tiers over there. The Every tier is entitled to the recaps of Sex and the City, so check those out if you're interested. We're doing Always Sunny. We even sold out of the top tier where people pick what we're watching. So thank you all that have signed up to support the show. I appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I am off to buy a whole bunch of shit we don't need and store it in a warehouse we'll never go into. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.